I'm trying to diversify my work because I don't like getting money from ads as my main source of income. I want to build stuff. So I finally made my first batch of mallets to sell. And by the time you're seeing this, they're probably already long gone, but I hope to keep making a few every so often of different things. So check on Etsy, see if, see if there's still some available. I'm hoping to sell these for $20 a piece. I think that's a good price for handmade. I see people making stuff on YouTube and they're selling it for like $100 or whatever. Like, no, I'm not gonna pay $100. The ideal price for this would be like a dollar, but that would require heavy mechanization and automation. I think that the future for my channel can end up being where I make regular, not scheduled, but fairly, fairly regular small runs of things. Like for instance, next up I'll be making a run of push sticks most likely, or a homemade level made from walnut. It's a really nice walnut that I found in the creek. We'll see. But I'm hoping to have, like I'll have a run of maybe like 20 sets of two of these, so 40 of these made for sawing and such. So, why has it taken me almost two years to produce these mallets? The reason is, I can't find cottonwood, one, and two, production manufacturing is very hard. Elon Musk was right whenever he said that the prototype is easy to make, but it's difficult to produce a bunch of these. So the first mallet, um, which was this one, this took about two days to make. About, I mean like, about, yeah, two days to make. And I would not be able to sell anything for, for whatever, like this would be like a hundred dollar mallet if I spent two days making it. Meanwhile, I've produced a lot of special tooling. In order to put the handles into the lathe, I have to cut X's in the end. Instead of me spending half an hour doing that by hand, I built the muncher. Oh. The muncher. It's a really deadly circular saw. But that allows me just to cut the X's whenever it works. I modified my lathe, got tons of things made up, got the right instrumentation, and also got better at freehanding these handles, making them by hand. Even though every single one of these is different. They're all different here, I'll show you. It's quite terrible, but uh, hey, it's handmade. What you gonna do about it? This one is now my, my standard because it has like this V shape. It centers to here. Um, having like the dumbbell shape where it's even and then big isn't quite working for my hands. This is a bit extreme. I went a bit hard on that one. But that was the one I made after this one. And you know, it still works. But I tried to go a little less on that for these ones. I'm not sure how to even do this video because I've already done all the work and I have to do an intro for it. So after we test these, I'll show you how I built them. good. That was not good. Aha. We got eight. 
This is obviously an issue with how the wood dried because some of this wood, I drew, I dried it wrong and it had some real bad cracks. So that makes sense. And also the wood seems kind of damaged. Maybe there was a forest fire or something. But I'll still sell this. Well, this will still a good handle. I'll still sell this, but I hope to later on sell the lower quality ones and maybe glue that together or something. Like all the handles that I made where I cut it just half an inch short of my specification. I can have a run of lower quality ones. Well, here's how I did all this. That is the longest intro I've ever done for a video. <laughs> Some of these blocks I start with I cut back in 2020 on my bandsaw from cottonwood logs, but since then I've gotten better with my chainsaw and I cut it with my chainsaw. I then drill a hole in the middle with these four screw bits. Well, only one of them, but I have two. I have had to put it on an extender so it can go all the way through. These are made by Vermont American, made in Austria. Pretty nice. I got these on discount on eBay for like five bucks. Then in a previous video, I made this. So these holes can be drilled all the way through. Made it with that little piece. Now, unfortunately, it is off because it's off this direction. I'm not really sure how to fix that. Oh well. With just a little bit of sanding, they look much cleaner.
took these out, out a lot more than I thought. It's because it's rectangular. Oh well. And the muncher was also off center. It was cutting over there. I have the technology to fix my mistakes. <laughs> Looks like I did just make things worse. How to start over. That is much better.
trying to make sure I'm getting them mostly square. Because when you, when you do that first hit, if you have them like that, I mean, it kind of puts like a groove in the side and it might be harder to fix it later. Whoops. There we go. Whoever buys that one is going to have a lot of extra room on the end so you can hit it down further. Like that. I'm going to get it stuck though. It's always a balancing act between having enough of this left over and then having too little that it just pulls right through. I think most of the time I hit the right balance. It's a bit low, but it, it holds. It just it's a little tight. I mean, it's a little close to the end. And this one, my new standard. Love it. So there, ow, oh, wow. So there we have it. I'm happy with this. This one's mine, and these are for sale. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. See ya. Now here's a nice thing, I've actually been saving cardboard, so I'm not paying a penny, and I'm not using any new cardboard. Making all my own boxes. Got my template. I've only had to use two boxes, two big boxes from Tupperware, and I've made all these boxes. They might look a little crappy, and if they get lost, well, I guess that'll be it, but hey, not wasting any carbon on them, and now money.